hello everyone welcome to this tutorial in this tutorial we are going to continue with our simulation series last time we modeled the compressor so in this particular tutorial we would um, add a distillation column to this process right so now we have the problem statement here in this document it says that the feed to this process is the outlet of the rigorous heat exchanger modeled in a previous tutorial it is sent into a heater that is the heat exchanger outlet is sent to a heater that operates with a temperature drop of 20 degrees celsius and a pressure drop of 70 kpa respectively the outlet of this heater is that is then sent into the distillation column right which has the specifications in the table below right so basically that's what we'll be doing and then we'll be answering some questions as usual right so um yeah so this is the model we have at this point if you are following up with this particular series you should have a simulation that looks like this right so this is the heat exchanger that is being talked about in that particular document which we modeled um a while ago right so before we continue um the heat exchanger should be taken back to the simple weighted model so for this particular tutorial use the simple weighted model ensure that your heat exchanger is in the simple weighted model because it is going to affect your distillation column results also add spec add um, the lmtd spec ensure that you added the lmtd spec of 118 degrees celsius right 118 degrees 118 degrees celsius then check your worksheet your shell outlet temperature should be 116.1 degrees right so when you have this value you know that what you are doing is correct or it tallies with what we have in this particular tutorial right so because this will affect what you get in the distillation column right so ensure that your shell outlet temperature is 116.1 degrees celsius you should get this value after adding lmtd spec at 118 degrees celsius so with that we can start the tutorial already so we just need the column pal the model palette we get out a heater and we specify the um, streams material energy then we specify the parameters so we have this yes then we can specify the parameters we have a pressure drop of 70 kpa and then a temperature drop of 20 degrees celsius right and and with that we are able to solve this particular heater then we can go over to the distillation column modeling right so we can quickly go into that so go to your separator section in your model palette go to your separator section and then you can actually um, get out a distillation column which you can use for this particular illustration right so um the specifications are all there we can see some of them you can see the condenser type the number of stages the feed stage the top stage bottom stage pressure the reboiler and condenser pressure drop then the reboiler configuration then the other specifications as well right so these are the um values we will be making use of so condenser type is partial we can add the um respective um energy streams for condenser and reboiler right then we can add the um feed stream and then the number of stages number of stages is 24 then we have the outlet streams 
we have the outlet streams we can specify the outlet streams so these are the specifications then we can click on next yes and then we have the reboiler configuration which is once through and then the regular high seas reboiler based on what we have in the document so we can actually move forward so the next is to specify the column pressures so you have um 1925 1925 for condenser pressure then reboiler pressure is 2070 yeah 2070 then the pressure drops are zero zero respectively so this is the distillation column input expert so it gives you the opportunity to specify the most important parameters of your column right uh, then we have the optional temperature values which we do not have in this um, table so we are going to ignore that particular section and just move forward so we have this where you can specify your um rates and then your reflux ratio i will just um, click on done and then specify it in the monitor section right i want to specify them in the monitor section so um we have reflux ratio as two then bottom rates as 1000 kg mol per hour then distillate rate is zero right so we can specify all of that so i want to deactivate all of these um, specifications now when i deactivate them you will notice that the degree of freedom is three now the degree of freedom of this distillation column is three now it is three because this column has a partial condenser right a partial condenser that is why the degree of freedom is three right so we specify reflux ratio then we specify the uh, bottom products rate, which is 1000 kg mol per hour. Then the distillate rate is zero, right? So after specifying them, the next rule is to actually activate these specified parameters, right? So we activate them, right? So once we are done activating them, you will notice that the column has solved right so and based on that we can check um, the column uh, calculated values right we can do that so um, let me just arrange this a little yes so it looks a bit presentable so we are good we can check some of the questions so the first one is um, what is the sum of the mole fractions of C2 and C3 in the propane stream? Now, C2 and C3 are, um, they are ethane and propane respectively. So we are looking for their mole fractions in the propane stream. So we have this as the propane stream. So you can either check from here or you check from the um, worksheet of the distillation column, which is this right so these are the values so you have ethane which is c2 at 0 0.0171 and propane at 0 0.9052 right so we can actually do a summation of those values so let's say we use this document to actually answer those questions so we have this so we have um, 0 0.9052 plus yeah 0 0.071 let me confirm the value 171 yeah something like this so we can actually add we can actually add these values to get a final value for this yes so you get 0 0.9223 as your value so the summation of the mole fractions of c2 and c3 is 0 0.9223 right so the next question is what is the reboiler and condenser duty right so we have um reboiler 
we have reboiler duty and condenser duty let me just yeah so i think this is okay so we have um reboiler and condenser duty let's just um, work with this document in filling the answers so um the propanizer okay so the um distillation column is actually a depropanizer um it separates propane from the other hydrocarbon the other hydrocarbons in the hydrocarbon mixture so it's asking for the condenser duty so we can actually check it from here right so we have this as the condenser duty so we can input this value there um condenser duty is 2.101 e raised to the power 7 uh kj right kj per hour yes so this is the value then um reboiler duty can also be found from there you can actually find that from here so you have um 5.679 e7 right so you have 5.679 e7 kj per hour right so these are the initial values based on the um based on the um, column specifications that we have already made so to solve the next questions we have to make an adjustment to the column, right? A slight adjustment will be made to the column. So it says, add a new specification such that the mole fraction for C2 plus C3 in the propane stream is 0 0.98, right? And it says, comment on the effect of this change on the flow rate of the bottom product, right? So now um, we are going to be adding a column spec, right, based on the question so it says that the summation of c2 plus c3 should be 0 0.98 at the moment it is actually um, 0 0.9223 right so it is desired that it should be increased to 0 0.98 so what you do is you go to monitor and you click on add spec right you click on add spec under add spec we can use column component fraction right so column component fraction now um yeah so we can um specify this yes we can specify this so we have um stage will be condenser yes let's check yeah so the propane stream is coming out from the condenser so we can use condenser as the stage then flow basis is more fraction then phase is vapor because it is coming out from the top so it should be in vapor form then you have spec value right before we specify the spec value we are going to um, specify the components so the components are c2 and c3 which are um, ethane and propane respectively right so we have ethane propane to be 0 0.98 right so spec value is 0 0.98 yes so we have done this and then we can exit this right so now we have to um, deactivate one of these specs and activate the newly added spec and then run the column again right so for example I can um, deactivate this bottom product rate right and use that to actually activate this um, component fraction that we have specified right? so I'll just click on it yeah so once you click on it it will actually solve right so it has solved based on this um, new spec that we have added right and if you check the worksheet you will see that the composition would actually um, go according to what we specified right so we have propane at 0 0.9616 and ethane at 0 0.0184 right so if you add these two values you will get 0 0.98 right so this column has solved based on the new specification we actually 
um made right so um the question now is um the question now is comment on the effect of this change on the flow rate of the bottom product right so we have to check the flow rate of the bottom product which is c4 plus right so this is the value of c4 plus right so you can see it you can see it now 1057 right so this is the new flow rate of the um c4 plus um stream right you know before it was 1000 right initially it was 1000 right but now when we specify this it changed to 1057 right 1057 so we can actually we can actually confirm that right um what can we do um okay so um yeah let's delete specs you can delete specs from the spec section so you delete this and you go back to monitor right so we can reset and then activate right so um you see it so the molar flow is 1000 kg mol per hour right 1000 kg mol per hour now when we add the spec when we add spec let's see how it changes so we add spec condenser vapor c2 c3 yes c2 c3 then we have the value so this is it right then we deactivate bottom product rate deactivate it we can reset if we want you can just click on reset and then you activate this and it converges right now if you go back and check the worksheet you see that it has changed back to 1057 right so this was what we were looking at initially so based on the change we have an increase in the molar flow rate of c4 plus right so it says comment on the effect so we can say that um so to comment on that we can say that um c4 plus right c4 plus increased right increased from let's say let's say we are using molar flow now so it increased from 1000 kg mole per hour to 1057 right kg mole per hour right so this is actually what happened when we made this um, change in specification right so this is the comment right so so depending on the flow rate you want to use you could actually use maybe the mass flow rate or the volumetric flow rate but i'm making use of the molar flow rate in this case right so the molar flow rate increased from 1000 kg mol per hour to um to 1057 yeah 1057 kg mol per hour so the next question we can answer the next question as well i believe right it says how does the change in tree affect the reboiler and condenser duties right so um yeah so what we can do is um we can say um condenser duty condenser duty after spec after spec change right after spec change then also reboiler duty reboiler duty after spec change right so these are the values after we change the specifications so we already have the initial values okay let me use um let's use equal to so we already had the initial values which we have um, if you scroll up we have the initial values here so we are checking the values now that we have changed the specs slightly so um yes so we can actually check that so we are at 0 0.98 um 
c2 plus c3 right yes so we can check the condenser so the condenser reduced yes it reduced to 1.892 right i think that is a reduction because if yeah 1.892 is 7 from what i'm seeing 1.892 is 7 kj per hour right 1.892 is 7 then let's check the second one then this one is um okay 5.34 e7 right 5.34 e7 yes 5.34 e7 k j per r right so these are the new values so basically the um the the um, i think they both reduced so we can say yes this also the reboiler duty also reduced so the reboiler and condenser duties duties reduced after the change we can you say this is what happened after the change so after you change the um specification to 0 0.98 both the reboiler and condenser duties reduced so for the last question it says um it has to do with the energy stream it says what are the cooling water flow rates in the condenser and hp steam flow rate in the reboiler right so this question will be easy for you if you have seen the energy um, stream tutorial right a tutorial on how to actually model energy streams and attach utilities to them right you can check the playlist for that it will actually help you understand what is being asked in this particular question so it's asking for cooling water flow rate and then hp steam flow rate so for um condenser so we have utility type right we have utility type here so under it you can click for cooling water for the condenser is cooling water right cooling water and then for the reboiler it is um hp right hp steam right hp steam so um yes let me confirm that hp steam in the reboiler and then cooling water in the condenser right so based on that um yeah so we have selected that and we can now extract the values so um cooling water flow rate we can still answer that question here right so we have let's um specify that cooling water flow rate right and then hp steam that is high pressure steam high pressure steam flow rate right both of them are in um they are both in um kilogram per hour yes yes so we can actually enter those values so cooling water is um, 9.046 e5 kg per hour right 9.046 e5 right you can see that there right for cooling water for the condenser then for the um, reboiler hp steam is 3.135 e4 right that is 3.135 times 10 raised to power 4 kg per hour, right? So these are the values, right? These are the values. So, um, yeah, these are the values. These are the answers to these questions. Yes, it stops at question 5. Yeah. So, um, yes. With this, we have come to the end of this particular tutorial right so you can actually save your work right so we went through a 
process, we simulated the stream, the valve, the separator, the pump, the um, heat exchanger, the compressor, yeah, and now we have simulated the um, the distillation column, right? The distillation column. You can also see that we sim we simulated the heater as well, right? Because uh, we did that before we simulated the distillation column. So this is actually a series, like you know, is a simulation series. It helps you understand how to do um, the basic um, simulations in high seas for both um, streams and equipment, right? So that's the essence of this particular series, right? So and we have gone through up to this point. The next will be to actually attach a a pipe yes a pipe to this model right so that's the next part of this particular series and it will be taken in the next tutorial for this series right so with that we have come to the end of this particular lecture if you have any questions on this tutorial let me know in the comment sections if you have in the comment section if you have any general questions let me know as well in the comment section um you can like this video share with your friends and also subscribe to this channel if you have not done so yet thank you for joining me in this particular tutorial do have a good day